Thank you. Uh, lovely welcome, and why not? Because this is uh, the big one. This is the big week. What's in store for you? Well, we have two quarterfinals, two semifinals, and then on Friday, the grand final to find the supreme champion of countdown of the last 14 years. Well, the great eight have been whittled down now to the superb six. We've got, uh, we've lost Chris Rogers and Andrew Perry, but we've got Joyce Cansfield, Alan Saldana, Hilary Hopper, Tim Morrissey, John Clark, and Harvey Freeman. One of these six will be the Supreme Champion on Friday. Can't wait, eh, Carol? No, it's been a fantastic series. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, I have to say. So it's a great climax now leading up to Christmas. Fantastic. It certainly is. And two very special people uh, join us today. Will you please welcome Joyce Cansfield and Alan Saldana. Well, everyone is special, of course, on this programme, but we're all romantics at heart, and uh, we've a real soft spot for Joyce because we've recorded, what, uh, nearly 1,900 programmes now, but Joyce, Cansfield from Otley, just across the road here almost, uh, appeared on our seventh ever show way back in November 1982, and she went on to become our first ever champion. And then two years later, she was runner-up to Mark Nyman in the first Championship of Champions. She then came back to Countdown uh, last month and just narrowly, it has to be said, defeated Steve Balmont and Jackie McLeod to win her group and then uh, reach these supreme quarterfinals. Now, Joyce is a married lady. She's a crossword compiler. She says she wants everyone to know. So I'm telling you, she's 67 years of age. Great. Uh, she's a former national Scrabble champion, just like Alan Saldana. And today she hopes to improve on her record of six wins, one draw and two defeats. So good luck to our old friend, Joyce Cansfield. And this young man really is countdown to uh, many people in this country, indeed all over the world, I suppose, have seen it. Alan Saldana, who uh, lives in Chelsea, and now he's 19 and doing an economics degree at Jesus College, Cambridge. But, of course, he first appeared at the ripe old age of 10, you all know that, in Series 15 in 1988. Now, he won 10 amazing games before he was defeated in the final by Dick Green. But he then came back in style to win two special games when we celebrated our 1,000th and our 1,500th editions. He's won both of those. And he's even more impressive on his return in this series when he equalled the record of 83 points for the half-hour programme. 83 points is the record. He equalled that. And that was in his semi-final defeat of Daryl Francis. He then beat David Trace in his group final. And his countdown record is now 15 wins out of 17. So welcome our old friend as well, Alan Saldana. Now then, in Dictionary Corner today, we have Sir Len G, who comes from a green isle and is wearing uh, Irene's leg. Well, actually, those are just anagrams of uh, the writer and uh, broadcaster's name. And if I tell you that the most apt anagram is Nigel's ear, well, you realise that it's Countdown connoisseur Nigel Rees and making a welcome return to help him from the OUP, Catherine Clark. Hello again. Hello. This is the first time we've ever been on together. Isn't that amazing? Well, it, it is amazing, <laughs> but it's, it's very delightful to have in this week of all weeks, this very special week, Catherine Clark, who graced uh, us uh, in Dictionary Corner for many years in the late 80s and early 90s. It has to be said that uh, she's now been promoted to very dizzy heights in the Oxford University Press, so it's great to have you back for this week, Carol. Car Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good start. <laughs> now, we've been showing everyone pictures of how they used to look. Now, this is how you used to look uh, when you were first on. <laughs> your first appearance. A little sweet. snow white there. Isn't it sweet? Gorgeous. OK, so that's Catherine Clark, the way she was. OK, well, the way we are today is raring to go, so uh, let's please get on with the game. Joyce Cansfield and Alan Saldana. 
Joyce, please go. Uh, a consonant, please go. Thank you very much, Joyce. L. And a vowel. A U. A consonant. F. A vowel. I. A consonant. S. A vowel. E. A consonant. L. A vowel, please. Another I. And another consonant. Thank you, Joyce. And that's C. Thank you. Okay, so that's the first selection of the week. Here we go. Seven, Alan. Seven. Seven, please, from Joyce. Phillies. F I double L I E S. Phillies, Alan. Same word, Phillies. Yep, there's a Phillies. Yep, yep. And that's, we can't do any better than mm. Phillies, can we? And it has both definitions here a young female horse or <laughs> a girl or young woman. Good. So, on we go now to the next round. And, Alan, it's your choice. Can I have a consonant, please? S. And another one, please. N. And another one, please. And L. A vowel. A. Another one, please. E. And another one, please. I. A consonant. N. Another one, please. P. And a vowel. And a vowel. And that is E. Thank you, Alan. Round two has been chosen. The countdown starts now. An eight from Alan Joyce. Eight. Right, Alan's eight. Penalise. Penalise for eight. That's good, isn't it? Joyce. Penalise. Yes, spelt with an S. We rather prefer it with a Z, don't we? Z would be Oxford style, but yes. S is just as good. Penalise for eight. Well done, both of you. That's brilliant. Well done. Yep. Eight points. <laughs> right. Well. Good scores, 15 and 15. Now, round three to you, Joyce. A consonant, please, Carol. Thank you, Joyce. J. And a vowel. A. A consonant. W. <laughs> a vowel. E. A consonant. M. A vowel. I. A consonant. H, a vowel, A, and a consonant, please. And a consonant. Thank you, Joyce. And D. Thank you. The countdown for this, the third round, starts now. Joyce to say? Five. Yes, really. five, Alan. Five. Five, Alan's five? Uh, ahead. Ahead, yeah. Joyce? Jord. Um, Jord. Well, we're on five. Anything else from Dictionary Corner? Uh, well, yes, we, we media folk. Media for five, would, that, would you work by that? Yeah. It is plural, you know. <laughs> well, you can't have any more points for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 20 and 20 scores now, numbers. Alan to choose. 
Can I have four from the top, please, and two from anywhere else? <laughs> four from the top and uh, two small ones. Oh, heck. One and seven. Well, you know what the others are going to be, don't you? I think 50, 100, 25, and obviously 75 is the final number. And the target is 890. All right, let's go for that. 890, 30 seconds to go. Let's go. I like to say as well. Uh, 890, Alan. 893. Well, three away, Joyce. 900. Sorry? 900. 900. So the 893 is obviously closer, so let's look at 893 then. 75 plus 50. Uh, 75 plus 50, that gives you 125. Uh, minus 1. Taking away the 1, yes. Yep, yep, yep. 124 times 7. Multiply that by the 7. Is um, 868. Yes, it is. And uh, the 25. And you've still got that left. Yes, you have indeedy. Uh, 893. Well, that's a very good stab to be three away, isn't it? What do, you, what do you say? What's your verdict? Yeah, I've got 891, but I've got a feeling, um, stick my neck out, that it's not possible to get 892. Right. Why? Because you only have the 7 and 1 to play with, really. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the one that uh, doesn't really help much. <laughs> Phew. Well, OK, so that means that uh, seven points are yours, Alan, so you will move up to 27 and 20 is Joyce's score. That's the way it is at the end of part one. Not quite the end of part one, of course, because Nigel is back with us and I'm sure he'll have something interesting to say. Oh, thank you, Richard. Um, champions are celebrated for their generosity. Uh, other people are celebrated for their meanness, and my mailbag has included some wonderfully colourful expressions for mean people. Here's one from uh, Travers Billington of Bovey Tracy. Uh, he says, my mother had a stock with the most original expressions from her dour Scottish upbringing. She would describe a Scrooge-like person as being so mean he'd skin a gnat for its hide. <laughs> Mrs. Edna A. Smith of Seaview in the Isle of Wight, a favourite saying of my mother's, she's so mean she wouldn't give you the dirt from under her fingernails. <laughs> and Betty Abbott of Redruth in Cornwall, after years of Sunday tea with a rather penny-pinching aunt of mine who was less than generous with the butter on the bread, my mother always referred to anyone on the mean side as another one of those who puts it on and scrapes it off. <laughs> Wouldn't be true of you, Richard, would it? You no, would... but you see, I'm only called Richard Whiteley. I want to be called Travers Millington. Isn't that wonderful? It's like a newsreader's name. Here is the news read by Travers Millington. No, I think Travers Millington, the old Shakespearean actor manager. Yes, yes, yes. Or even the or, Travers Millington show. Or even Bobby Tracy, the well known Shakespearean <laughs> actor. <laughs> well, we must stop being envious of other people's names because uh, the names here to, that matter are Joyce Cansfield and Alan Sandana. You'll see more of them in part two. Thank you so much. Do get your paws on the special packs of Andrex toilet tissue. They offer free children's seats for Disney's 101 Dalmatians. Just one nine-roll pack, for instance, gets you one free child seat. Well, you know how many you need. It depends on the size of your litter. Having Lucretia Borgia for lunch wasn't such a good idea. A touch of heartburn, Master. Yes. If you suffer heartburn or indigestion, one Zantac 75 will prevent the production of further excess acid and go on working beyond your next meal. So, will sir be fit for tonight's soiree? Ah, yes. What's for dinner? Barbecued sinner. Zantac 75, devilishly effective against heartburn. Quello che vuole. Basta che firmi.
It's Christmas. Oh, I need some excitement in my life. Maybe I'll fill in this computer dating thingy. Wouldn't you rather have a nice hot snack? Now, describe your dream date. A baked potato with a generous topping of creamy Philadelphia. Generous, yes. Smooth, sophisticated, cool, luxurious, irresistible. See, I was right. You don't need a man at all. Mm. You just needed a new serving suggestion. Welcome back to Countdown. This is our third quarter final of our superb six, and being superb at the moment, Joyce Cansfield on 20, and Alan Saldana, who got those seven points uh, in the numbers game just before the break. So that's the position, nothing in it at all. So, Alan, round five, as you know, is all for you, and it's letters. Can I have a consonant, please? Of course, Alan. F. Another one, please. C. And another one, please. And P. Vowel. I. Another one, please. A. And another one, please. O. A consonant. Q. Another one, please. T. And a vowel. And E. That's it, and here we go. Six. Joyce? Six. Joyce is six. OP8. OP8. O-P-I-A-T-E. Yes, OP8. Yours, Alan? Capote. C-A-P-O-T-E. Capote, capote. Where are, we get, are we getting there? Capote, capote. A long... Yes. What, what is it? You tell us. It's a historical word meaning a long cloak with a hood, formerly worn by soldiers and travellers. <laughs> not, not the same kind. Of French diminutive of cape. Well, well they're six. Have it, chum. Great, <laughs> they're six, but they're both good words, aren't they? Yes, they're excellent. Ex well done. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> opiates, opiate there, and uh, capote. Capote. Is it capote? Yes. I think capote. Capote. Mm -hmm. Capote or capote. Yes. Capote. Okay. Well, well done. That was very good indeed. Right now, Joyce, it's your letters to us. A consonant, please. Thank you, Joyce. S. And another one. G. And a vowel. U. A consonant. V. A vowel, please. E. A consonant. N. A vowel. O. A consonant. T. And another vowel, please. Thank you. And A. Thank you. Let's start the clock.
to you, Joyce? Seven. We're on seven, and Alan? Seven. Alan, seven? Tongues. Tongues? Yes, tongues. Yours, Joyce? Tongues. <laughs> Speaking with tongues. Yeah, that's something you could put your tongue round, isn't there, Catherine? There's the word nougat. For six. Which is, as everyone knows, a sweet, or if you pluralise it, nougat with an S. Ah, uh, nougars. Nougars. Nou yes, you would say nougars, wouldn't you? That's right. Yes. And also for seven, Vegas. Yes? Vegas? Yep. Okay, uh, seven, but tongues there. Both of these had tongues, so that's fine mm. for us. Good. So, scores are advanced by seven, of course, 33 and 40. Three rounds to go. Uh, the last letter's now to be chosen by Alan. Could I have a consonant, please? Of course, Alan. And that's G. Another one, please. S. Another one, please. And W. A vowel. E. Another one, please. O. And another one, please. And E. A consonant. D. Another one, please. R. And a vowel, please. And a vowel, Alan. And I. Thank you. The countdown starts now. Seven. Uh, seven coming up, Joyce. Seven. Right. Um, Alan, seven. Dowries. Yes, dowries. And yours? Dowries. <laughs> yeah, well, rich words here. Dowries, of course. Now, there's a bit of scuffling going over there. What do you say yeah, to that? It depends how you spell weirdos, really, doesn't it? And whether you can have more than one weirdo. But, yes, you can have more than you one. You can have more than one, um, uh, but you don't put an E in it. It's just O-S at the end. W E I R D O S. Yes. We are those. All right, well, that's seven, but uh, diaries is, uh, is what we're coming up with here. Not me, you understand, but Joyce and Alan. 40 and 47 of the scores, two rounds to go. Joyce, it's your numbers now, please. Joyce is Joyce. <laughs> um, one from the top, please, and five from the bottom row. Thank you, Joyce. One, two, three, four, and five. Right, the numbers this time around are eight and six. One and two, four and seventy-five, and the target is seven one seven. So it's seven one seven, seven one seven. Here we go. Seven one seven, Joyce. Seven one seven. Good, Alan. Seven one seven. Right. Uh, I'll go to you, Joyce. Seventy five minus four. Yes. Seventy five minus four is seventy one. Seventy one. Eight plus two is ten. It is indeed. Seven hundred and ten. Six plus one is seven. Yep. Add it on. Okay. And then the six and the one. Yep. Seven one seven. <laughs> it's going to tell me the same way, are you? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just the same way. So, look, they've both got 10 points, so uh, we we'll leave the applause to later because it's 50 and 57, so you know and they know what that means. Another, yet another crucial conundrum, as so often it's down to the very last round, the very last hurdle. So, if you're both ready, please, calm in the studio, please now reveal today's crucial countdown conundrum. Yes, Alan, on uh, 11. Livestock. Livestock. <laughs> yeah. Well, I must say, 
I got a bit worried for him when he hadn't got it after two seconds. <laughs> But uh, there you did. It only took a, it only took a few seconds more to get livestock. Therefore, with 67 points, you can well see Alan goes into the uh, semi-final. So, Alan, well done to you. Uh, Joyce, well, uh, you haven't uh, made it any further down the track into this, but I tell you, there'll always be a place for you in the history of Countdown because one thing they can never take away from you is the fact that you were the very first champion of Countdown and many followed after you, but a few did it with such a good grace and charm as you. So we have... Uh, this little plaque for you, which we hope you'll uh, enjoy, and send you all our very best wishes. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Joyce Canston, a great lady. For Joyce, it's a young man's game, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank let, me, you. let me hear you say it. <laughs> right, well, who are the young men... Uh, Tomorrow, well, only one, I'm afraid. Uh, Tim Morrissey, of course, uh, is a young man. Uh, Hilary Hopper is not quite a young man, but uh, she's quite a brain box, I can tell you. <laughs> I can tell you. So that'll be another great game tomorrow, and uh, we look forward to that. So from uh, all of us here, from Nigel, mm -hmm. Catherine, and Carol, and from me, it's goodbye. See you tomorrow. <laughs>